It happened during our third year of marriage. I remember it was summer and very hot out, even at night. It happened in the very place I still live to this day. It's a very old apartment, but it's a very nice one. We have huge windows here, and one of them faces the street in front of our building. Due to these windows, if you leave the curtains open, anyone walking past will see everything. So we make a habit of closing the curtains. Back when this took place, we used to sleep with the window facing our heads. Basically, our bed was right in front of the window. I remember that on the night this took place, I was having a really tough time sleeping. It was probably due to the heat. Maybe even some stress. I remember being really tired and unable to get to sleep. I was wide awake and I hated it. I think it was around 2am when the following took place. I couldn't tell you the exact time though. I felt the wind blowing through the small gap in the curtains. It was cooling my cheeks, it was nice. I then sat up and looked towards the window. It was supposed to be the height of summer. I lay back down in bed and glanced at my husband. He was sound asleep. Lucky. I went back to trying to fall asleep, but then I felt as if something just touched the hairs on the top of my head. I thought to myself, quit being paranoid and just go to sleep. You're searching for reasons to stay awake. I did feel like something touched my head though. After a few moments, I felt that cool windy breeze flow all over me again. And I thought to myself, once again, just ignore it. It's your imagination, just go to sleep. It felt like a rhythmic flow of air was pointed right at my head. I had to check the window again. I didn't want to go to sleep without checking. When I half sat up and turned to face the window, I saw something that horrified me. A hand was reaching in through the window. It was carefully positioned behind the corner of the curtain. The hand was slowly edging forward to open the curtain inwardly. I watched, frozen in horror. I don't think I could have done anything else. The curtain opened inward and slowly revealed the shadow of a dark human face. The streetlight was against me so I couldn't make out any features on the face. That of course was terrifying. Seeing that dark human head moving closer to the window was mind-alteringly frightening. So terrifying that I let out the loudest involuntary scream of my life. As I screamed, I saw the face duck down and disappear. I say disappear because I don't know where that person ran off to. I was too busy screwing my eyes shut and raising my hands to protect myself. My husband jolts to life like he had just been zapped by one of those cardiac arrest defibrillator machines. He starts to panic and asks me what the hell's going on. I told him about the person and the face and the hand reaching in and we closed the window and vow never to sleep with it open again at night. We called the police and told them the situation. They said they would increase patrols in the area but the damage was already done. I felt like the police wouldn't be able to do anything about that weirdo. One thing we did, though, was move the bed away from the window. Just thinking back on that night, that air I was feeling could have been the person's breath or something. And oh God, when they touched my hair, what else were they gonna do if I was asleep? That night, I wonder, I don't wanna know. I don't want to know. I'm just glad I couldn't sleep that night, I guess. Even now when I remember that night, I can see that black silhouetted head and arm reaching in. It's, it's burned into my memories. This happened when I was left home alone as a youngster one night. It was horrifying. 
I think the reason I was left home alone was probably due to my parents both working late, one night simultaneously. My family home was opposite a national highway on one side, and on the other side it faced the sea. It's a very rural place, like literally in the middle of nowhere. That night I was watching something dumb on TV quite late. Whenever my parents were out late, they always told me to take myself to bed on time, but I never did. I just stayed up late. That night, like I say, I was watching some late night variety show in the living room. My cat was with me, being lovely and fluffy as usual. Suddenly, I heard a knock at one of the windows of the living room. It came from the side of the house that faced the national highway. It sounded kind of deliberate, you know, kind of like this. It was kind of windy out that night, so I guess that maybe a tree limb or something tapped the glass. I don't know, out in the countryside you tend to hear all kinds of things late at night, and I guess you grow to live with them. I just kept right on watching TV without worrying about it. A few moments or so passed and I hear something else. This time it sounded as if the knocking came from another window in the room next to the lounge. I started to feel a little spooked. The first few pangs of fear, you know, but I let it go. I just kept watching TV. I knew that no one but me was in the house or around the house. Then I heard another series of knocks. This time they came from the front door. At this point, young though I was, I couldn't help but notice a pattern. A few windows had been knocked. It wasn't as if I was hearing the knocking from one continuous location. Something was wrong. I sat frozen to the sofa considering whether to turn the volume up or down. One part of me wanted so much to ignore the knocking sounds, but the other part of me screamed at me to listen, to turn off the TV and react. I turned down the volume, but not fully off. I didn't want to be plunged into silence. I wanted the safety of the voices on TV. The knocking continued. This time it sounded as if it came from the back door and then the kitchen window. At that point, I realized that the knocks were sort of circling me, going around the house. These knocks were so light that each time I heard them, I doubted myself, doubted myself but couldn't convince myself. The knocks then reached the sea-facing window of the lounge, and I guessed if there was any method to the madness that the knocks would likely stop after one full round of the house. However, I found that I was quickly proven wrong. I heard much louder and much more deliberate sounding knocks at the lounge window facing the highway. After a minute maybe, the same knocking sound at the same volume came from the window next to the lounge. I thought to myself instantly, it's a lap. Someone's doing a lap around our house and their knocks get louder once they return to the place they started. Yeah, at this point, I wasn't convinced it was the wind anymore. I decided to anticipate the next knock and head to the front door. Our front door has a frosted glass panel so you can see in or out clearly. The knock came clearly at the front door, but I couldn't see anyone there. I looked outside the downstairs bathroom window but again, I couldn't see anyone. I heard a knock coming from the room next to the kitchen, and I knew that the knocks were once again moving. I was getting so scared now, I rushed back into the lounge. In the lounge, I saw that my cat was looking agitated. I sat there wide-eyed, listening to the sound of the knocks, slowly moving around the house. I was just frozen in place. I didn't know what to do. I felt as if it was probably a bad idea to stay in the living room. I picked up my cat, and I planned to escape upstairs. There was one problem though. The stairs were in view of the front door and one of the windows, so I needed to wait until the knocks were at the back door before I could run upstairs. As soon as I heard those knocks at the back door, I raced upstairs. I didn't even turn my bedroom light on. I just held my cat tightly to my chest and strained my ears to listen for any noises. The knocking came again. 
It had completed its second round of the house, and now was beginning its third. I decided to use the darkness of my bedroom as a vantage point. I looked out of the second floor window. My bedroom was directly above the lounge, so if someone was down there, I should have been able to see them. But once again, I couldn't. I heard knocking, but no one's there. I was on the verge of panic. The cat starts growling and hissing. I don't know if there was an extremely stealthy person out there, or if I was dealing with something paranormal. I had the gut feeling that it was human, though. The knocking was really, really loud now. It was terrifying. I didn't know what I could do. The house phone was downstairs, and I was way too freaked out to go back down there. Then something happened. Gradually, the knocks grew quieter and softer until they were barely audible. The cat began to calm down a little, too. When my cat lay on my bed and closed her eyes, I knew that she didn't feel threatened anymore. I felt as if everything was alright. I decided to go and get ready for bed. I had learned my lesson about staying up too late. I was just about to leave my room and go and brush my teeth when I heard something. The knocking was back, and it was louder than ever. It sounded as if every window in our house was being knocked at once and the cat went mental. Full-on arched her back, and her fur was standing on end. I had no idea what to do. I just crawled into bed and covered myself with my bedding like a coward. I was crying. I didn't know why someone was messing with our house like that. The banging was so loud, it felt like the walls were shaking. I was mumbling out loud something like, please leave us alone, I can't take it anymore. I don't know how long I was like that in bed, but before I knew it, the knocking sound had quieted down again, and the front door was opening. I was terrified. Whoever was out there had managed to get in. But then, just as quickly as fear had overwhelmed me, relief did. I heard the voices of my parents coming from the foot of the stairs. That kind of phenomena has never happened again at my family home. I have no clue if someone was messing with our home you know, to intimidate us, or maybe it was some of my school friends pranking me. They never owned up to it, if it was them, though. Sometimes I wonder if it was something supernatural. I have heard rumors about those lost at sea, returning, and knocking on doors. Hi, Jay here. Actually, I cover that last point in more depth in another video. I will put a link to that one in the bio. It was in the Sea Story collection if you've heard that one before. This happened before a national holiday not too long ago. I didn't have school the next day, and that's always a cause for celebration. I was up kind of late for my age. It was about 10.30. I was in high school back then. I would just have to quickly explain my family dynamic because it will make sense later. My father passed away when I was younger. My mother works all the time and I live with my grandparents. That night my granddad was out and my grandma was somewhere downstairs. I was studying for exams, high pressure stuff. I was supposed to care about it massively for some reason but I was more interested in my music back then to be honest. I used to listen to my tunes through the PSP. Can you imagine? I was taking a break from studying, you know, just trying to give my eyes a little rest. So I set my PSP down, I leaned back on my chair, and I shut my eyes for a second. I opened them, and I looked at my bedroom door. I noticed something. It sent my head into a spin. I saw something weird. It was the figure of a person. A person who wasn't a family member. It was just this shadowy shape peering at me round the corner of the door of the room across the hall. Across the hall was an empty room. We used it for storage. There was no logical reason why that shadow should be cast in that room. I first thought that my mum or my grandma had left the window open to air out the house, and I was seeing a very human-looking curtain position. Or said curtain being caught on the balcony or something. But that seemed highly implausible. 
especially since the way it seemed to be leering around the door to look at me. It was no trick of the light. I watched that shadow then emerge from the spare room and enter the hallway. It was like it was fixated on me. Even though it was dark, I could tell by it, the movements of that thing that it was facing me. It crept around the door into the hallway with its back against the door and the hallway wall. I then watched as it slowly backed off towards the stairs and before I could see it descend the stairs, it disappeared. Here's the weird thing. It looked like it was the same height as me by its silhouette. It looked like it had the same hair. It looked just like me. It's really hard to explain. Now, like I said, it was just my grandmother and I in the house at the time. She didn't go upstairs much because she had bad hips. But if it was her, I would recognize her silhouette. And surely she would hit a light or something. I was left there in my chair, shuddering trying to understand what I had just witnessed. What does it mean? Something that kind of looked like me was watching me from the other room. Why, for what purpose? Was this some kind of spirit or shadow person? Did it leave because I spotted it? What would have happened if I didn't notice its presence? I was just horrified. When my brain searched and searched for logical answers, it came back with none. It was just terrifying. I started to freak out a bit, and then I thought, oh god, what if it comes back? I didn't want to go downstairs because that was the last place I saw that thing head off to. I still have no idea what the hell it was, and I lived in that house right up until I moved out, in fear that I would see that shadowy figure again, but thankfully I didn't. I did wonder if it could have been a home intruder. Maybe, I guess. I was young, maybe I didn't. No. I don't know, though. I think I would have seen some more features of that invader or their clothes. I don't think that's what it was. I never told anyone in my family about what happened that night because I was worried that they would laugh at me and call me weak. I didn't want my mum to worry about me when she was out working so many hours. I do wonder, though, if they would have believed me if I told them. This happened when I was on a late night walk in my neighborhood. When I was in high school, I had this strange habit of heading out late, going on walks around the city. I know it's a bit of a dangerous thing for a teenager to do, but I just did it all the time. I grew up in the suburbs, by the way, so if I snuck out at like 2 or 3 a.m., for example, I would never get stopped by the police or get caught by my family. I really liked that time in the morning. I didn't have to worry about anything annoying. I had a lot going on at the time, and it was nice to have that kind of escape route. So anyways, I snuck out one night, as usual, for my nightly stroll. I usually went out like that, on average about three times a month. During my walk, I spotted a guy wearing a grey suit. He looked as if he was an office worker. I mean, it's not that out of the ordinary to see something like that, right? An office worker heading home late at night after a night out drinking? It's hardly front page news over here. What was unusual was the fact that he was stood stock still at the top of a slide in our local park. He looked like a standard middle-aged office worker, but to see a guy like that so out of place was really jarring. Why was he stood on a slide in the middle of the night? His head was facing away from me, so I couldn't make out what kind of expression he had. He looked to be fixated on something. I was shocked, but then I reminded myself that I had seen an office worker before sleeping on a park bench, and this wasn't all that different. The guy was probably at the top of the slide because he was either looking for something or trying to get his bearings. I didn't care all that much, I decided to keep moving on. I kept walking for about an hour more before I got tired and felt like going home. In order to get home, I needed to pass by the park on the opposite side. I got back to the park and remembered the guy on the slide. I wondered, as I was starting to feel more than a little tired, if he would still be there. I guessed that he wouldn't be. 
but I was wrong. The guy had been stood in the same position for at least 40 minutes. Now I thought it was weird. I stopped there by the park and I watched. The man was standing in the same position as last time. All the while I watched him, he didn't move a single muscle. I felt a chill trickle down my spine for some reason. I decided to just go home and leave him to whatever he was doing. As I passed by, I noticed something. When I saw him the first time, his head had been facing in the other direction. And when I passed him by the second time, I noticed that his head was facing the other direction. The opposite direction. So basically in 40 minutes he had done little more than turn his head. Why was he now looking the other way? Was he trying to hide his face from me? I don't know how he could have known that I was going to be there. I felt as if all the pores were opening on my body. There was something weird going on. I should have just ran home, but I didn't. I decided to head to the other side of the park once again. And when I got there, his head was facing in the opposite direction. I thought about going in the other direction, but I just didn't have the courage. I didn't know what that was all about, but it creeped me out. I kept thinking about what would happen if he turned to face me, and I really didn't like those thoughts. It doesn't sound all that creepy, I guess, if you weren't there, but this experience lives with me. I don't think it was something paranormal though. It was a very real person, but what they were doing stood on a slide at 3 in the morning, stock still for 40 minutes straight. It's something I cannot answer. Maybe it was a drunken prank or dare or something. Either way, I didn't go out walking late in that area again. This happened when I was in the lower grades of elementary school. Now back when I was little, I used to share a room with my sister. We had a kind of bunk bed situation going on, and because she was the elder sister, she got the top bunk. Why was that such a coveted thing back in those days? I have no idea. Anyway, so one night I was lying there in the bottom bunk, and I called out to my sister. I know I wanted to know if she was awake, but I have no idea what I was going to talk to her about. My sister didn't reply. I guessed that she had just fallen asleep. From that age up to present day, whenever I get into bed, I end up thinking about things and then I become unable to sleep. When I couldn't sleep at that age, I would just stare up at the slats in the bed above me. After a while, my eyes would become accustomed to the darkness. I would sometimes look around our bedroom to see what I could see in the dark. That night, I gradually scanned my eyes over the room, and then a black object came into my field of vision. It scared the hell out of me, to be honest. But I tried to remain calm and keep my composure. But I would be lying if I said that I didn't feel my heart pounding in my chest. When I looked at the black object directly, I quickly understood what it was. It was my sister's long, dark hair hanging off the side of the top bunk, dangling down. I smiled to myself and went back to looking at the slats above my head. I then did a kind of double take because something dawned on me. There was something wrong. The hair that was dangling off of the top bunk seemed longer than my sister's hair. Not by a couple of centimeters, I'm talking about a good 20 centimeters, a good 7 inches. My heart resumed pounding. I shut my eyes and then I opened them again. I opened them slowly. I didn't want to open my eyes, but curiosity got the better of me. I stared at the hair. It wasn't my sister's hair. I knew that deep down in my heart. We did each other's hair all the time, and I knew exactly what her hair looked like. When I opened my eyes, the position of the hair had changed. It was clearly not the back of someone's head. What I thought I was looking at was the back of my sister's hair dangling over the side of the bed, but in actuality, what I was looking at was the front of someone's head with the hair dangling off of the top bunk. The head slowly and silently moved into a position where it was peering down at me over the edge of the top bunk. The long dark hair was hanging off the head towards the floor. The eyes of an unknown woman locked into mine. 
The upside down face of an unknown woman in my dark bedroom caused me to panic and become completely stone-like in my bed. I literally couldn't move. I felt as if I was paralyzed to the point where I couldn't even breathe. My muscles felt so hard they began to shake with fear. All the while, this unknown woman glared at me like some kind of snake. I was really panicking, but I knew I needed to do something. I shut my eyes, summoned all my inner strength, and screamed for my mum. I felt like that scream came from the bottom of my stomach. It gave me the power or courage to leap out of bed and race to my mum's room. I slept with my mum that night. And up until we moved house, I went to bed as early as possible every night. I didn't want to be the last one awake or be up late because I thought that woman would come back. I remember her face so clearly. It's hard to explain. Maybe even harder if you don't know the example of who I'm talking about. But I will say that she looked like a famous athlete we have over here in Japan called Tani Ryoko. But she didn't smile like Tani Ryoko. She was just something else. Anyway, here's a photo, if it helps. Keep in mind, I was about seven or something when this happened, and my sister was only a year older than I was. So I'm unable to convince myself that seeing that face was a trick of the light. The sad thing about this was, whenever I saw Tani Ryoko, I got the chills. I still do now. She didn't even do anything. I don't know. Sometimes I think maybe our home had a history. I didn't see the unknown woman again, and I can only thank all the known gods for that. Warning, this story features some grotesque depictions. This happened about eight years ago, back when I was living in Yokohama. I had a job on Nihon Odori, but I was living in a bad neighborhood. I lived in a really run-down apartment near Bandobashi. I didn't hate it there because I wasn't exactly fond of a simple life. You know, public order or societal rules. If you went out at night in my area, you would likely see tons of weirdos. It's a predator and prey situation. Half of the creeps out there are looking to make some cash from whatever method they think is possible. And the other half are the creeps they prey upon. Yeah, I saw all kinds of strange things while I was living out there. I'll give you a couple quick examples. There was this old dude who was always drunk and lying in the road no matter what time of day or night it was. Another one was this woman, who when she was shopping in the local supermarket, she would say everything she was doing out loud. There were many more examples, but none more memorable than what happened when I headed home late one night. I had a motorbike and I used it to drive to a nearby parking lot. There I would cut the ignition and then push it through a narrow alleyway back to my building. Using this shortcut was really great because it saved me a lot of time hassle, and gas. The only problem was the fact that a lot of bums and drunks used that alley to either drink, piss, or pass out. I tried not to use the shortcut all the time. I mean, it was a really dark and narrow place. It wasn't great, but it was fine. Anyways, I was working late that night. I didn't think I'd ever leave the office until about 1am. It's crazy, right? But it happens in Japan more often than you might think. The seniors at our company stayed even later than us, putting together the paperwork for a new contract. But when they said, you young people can go home, me and a few others jumped at the chance. Since I left for home later than I wanted, I decided to use my alley shortcut. I just wanted to go to sleep. I couldn't even be bothered to push my bike back to my building. I just left it right there in the parking lot. I entered the alley and I saw a black mass in the alley, some kind of shape. It made me stop dead in my tracks. 
It was just visible due to the far-reaching streetlight. It looked like a large garbage bag at a distance. As I drew closer to the black mass in the alley, I wondered what it was, but then I heard a weird noise. It sounded like a squelching kind of noise, like someone wading through mud. I realized that the squelching noise seemed to react to my movement. Each time I took a step forward, I heard it subtly. Perhaps that was a coincidence though, because with each step I realized something else too. The black mass before me in the alley wasn't a garbage bag. It was a human. No, not just one human, but two. One of the human shapes seemed to be lying down with its feet facing my way. The other humanoid shape, it seemed to be on top of the first shape, with its back facing towards me. This humanoid shape was wearing black, and it looked like it was doing something. <laughs> well, this shocked me. I couldn't believe people would want to, you know, get down in Bum Alley. It was gross, creepy, and just plain weird, but the fundamental feeling I felt at the time was one of pure exhaustion, so I was like, whatever, I'm going home. Another point, I was so used to this alley and my area, I guess that seeing what I saw wasn't all that disturbing or shocking. I was kind of desensitized at that point. I didn't know what to do though, so I just stood there for a while trying to remain silent, trying to figure out whether or not to try and pass them by or turn back. I was about two or three meters away from them in the alley and then disaster struck. My company cell phone began to ring. It gave me such a fright. I never have my phone on the highest volumes, but at that time of night, in the quiet of the alley, it sounded like the loudest thing in the world. It turns out that I wasn't the only one surprised by the sound of my ringtone, because the person who was on top of the other person spun around to face me, and I got a look at him. He was a middle-aged man by the look of it. He was wearing spectacles and a dark coat with the hood up. He looked a little chubby too. The most notable thing about that guy was what he was holding. He held a hatchet-looking bladed weapon in one hand. I got a look at his face. There was just enough streetlight to make it out that night. He had a dark stain all over his mouth. I saw white puffs of breath coming out of his mouth with each exhalation he took. He panted like a dog. His round little spectacles looked all fogged up too. They were pure white. While he was turned in my direction, I could see more of the person he was on top of. There was a whitish looking object. It kind of looked like a hand. The person underneath the man with the glasses looked to be pinned down, lying on their front. The yellowish end of that hand like object was facing me and I instantly recognized what it was. It looked like it was some kind of bloody stump. I then realized what that dark stain around the guy with the glasses mouth was, as well as the sound, that terrible squelching sound that I had heard earlier. It was likely the sound of the man in the glasses, eating. The guy he was on top of looked smaller than him, perhaps he was one of the bums or the drunks I'd ran into in the alley before. I was frozen in place for a little while, but as soon as my brain got out of first gear, I turned on my heels and I got the hell out of that alley. I remember wanting to scream, but I just couldn't. I heard him kind of grunt, and then I heard an object get flung in my direction. It collided with one of the walls in the alley and it sounded metallic. I'm guessing that it was his weapon. My heart was racing. When you're so scared like that, deep down in the bottom of your heart, you'll find that you can't even breathe. From behind me, I heard the shout of that man. It didn't sound natural. It sounded like some kind of inhuman guttural growl. I'm not saying the guy wasn't a human because he was. I'm just saying that whatever noise came out of that man came from a very disturbed place. I ran straight into the local convenience store to be in the safety of the light. I hung out there for a while until I was certain that the man hadn't followed me, and as soon as I was sure I was safe, 
I literally broke down in the men's room while I was sobbing and freaking out. I think I must have attracted the attention of the store worker and maybe any customers who were out as late as I was. Just then as I was about to compose myself, my cell phone rang again. One of the seniors at my company had been trying to get in touch. I can't remember exactly what he wanted, but it was something like he needed access to a shared file, which was password protected or something, or he didn't know where something was saved. He noted that I sounded upset, and he showed something similar to concern towards me, which felt so entirely alien, it was almost as frightening as what I saw in the alley. I didn't know how I could answer him with the truth, so I just lied and said that everything was fine, and I hung up. I felt that at least speaking to someone had a calming effect, so I decided to go to the nearest police station to make a report. However, there was no one at the front desk. There was a number to call if the desk was unattended, and I called it and called it, but no one picked up. I was afraid to go home that night. I didn't want to be in the same area as what I saw. I took a taxi to the next town over and spent the night in a 24-hour cafe in Sakuragicho, and then I headed home in the morning. As soon as the sun came up, I phoned in sick for work, and I spent most of the day looking for a new place to live. I haven't been anywhere near that alley since. I have no idea what happened that night, but I keep checking news sources for any kind of cannibalistic reports. I know what I saw. I just hope that man still isn't out there. This didn't happen all that long ago. I ran out of smokes late one night, and I needed to head to the convenience store. You might be thinking, why the hell didn't this dude just wait for the next day since it was late? But I say to you, cigarettes and snacks are essential to my productivity and mental power. So it was non-negotiable. You see what I mean? It's a watertight argument. It was summer, but kind of chilly at night. I only had a t-shirt on at home, so I went to my closet and selected a suitable jacket and headed out. I remember that there was a crescent moon out that night and I was in good spirits. I got to the convenience store without anything noteworthy happening. So far, this is a riveting story about a man buying some smokes and some sweets, but stick with it, or not, whatever. So, anyways, I was in the store, scoping out the chocolate, juice, etc. I walked over to the counter to tell the employee what smokes I wanted, and a guy came rushing into the store. He looked pale and nervous, almost tweaking out, but not that. You know that thing where people get so impatient or stressed they start scratching up their neck randomly or their arms it was like that anyways he rushes in and he asks the clerk where the salt is i was all like yo back of the line what are you doing but then i thought hey let's listen in on this one i set my items down on the counter and looked at the guy side-eyed and after a while i turned to the guy and asked is everything all right something like that I mean, what would you do in my situation? I looked him up and down and I noticed something. The guy looked as if he had been running around in the mud. His clothes were filthy. Moreover, it looked as if there was some dirty little handprints on his clothing too. I looked at those markings on his clothing for a while and I thought to myself, those are definitely handprints. I found it weird that they were small handprints though. Anywho, the guy doesn't really reply to me. He just kind of nods and then he tries to catch the attention of the clerk. He asks the store worker, Is there a shrine around here, man? I, I need to get myself purified, you know? Me and the clerk exchange some glances. And we must have been thinking the same things because we both smirked at each other. The guy goes off to get his purchases or to the bathroom, I'm not sure. During the time he's away from the counter, I ask the store clerk if he had any idea what that was all about. And his answer kind of shocked me. He said that a guy as stressed out as that guy was wasn't all that rare. The guy comes back to the counter with some salt and we spoke again. Apparently, there is a supposedly haunted spot in our area 
I was so intrigued I just had to ask for more detail. The rumor around town was that we had ourselves a haunted garbage can. I almost laughed in that guy's face when he told me that, but I held it together. Basically, something would always appear in the garbage can or near it in the park, just a few meters away from the convenience store, like some kind of cursed object spawn zone by the sound of it. The guy kind of gestured towards the direction of where that garbage can was. I was so curious, I kept pressing him for more information. Okay, so this guy claimed that he had found a doll sat on top of the garbage can. The doll in question was an Ichimatsu doll. Here's an image of one, if you want to contextualize it. It's on screen now. Imagine seeing that on the top of a garbage can in a park in the dead of night. The guy insisted that the doll attacked him. He said it attacked him when he went to pick it up. Its little hands hit back at him. This was such a crazy thing to hear. I didn't think it was scary, I just thought it kind of sounded cute to be honest. I wanted to see the doll for myself, so I asked the guy how I could find the spooky garbage can, and once he told me, I headed out there to find it. I went to the exact location the man said, but I could not find it. There was nothing there. I turned to head home and, and give up. But then, I felt as if the convenience store bag I was carrying suddenly became a lot more heavier. I thought that when I looked into the bag I would see that doll for sure for some reason. I looked into the bag and I'm not sure if it was because it was dark and my eyes were making shapes out of shadows, but I swear I saw like a child's face. It wasn't cute at all, and not that kind of doll that the guy said, it looked like it had a grumpy expression. A little like the Cheshire Cat. It did look like a doll though, I have to say. Rather than feeling shocked or horrified, I was enraged. I didn't want something gross to be all, all up in my bag with my stuff, so I slammed the bag as hard as I could against a nearby telephone pole. I heard the sound of something being crushed and then some black liquid began to drip out from the bag. I thought, whoa, maybe this place is haunted or cursed. But then I realized I was wrong, shortly afterwards. The only thing that I had managed to kill was my cans of cold coffee. And I bet that the chocolate I had bought too had died a death. Damn it. I looked into the bag and I could still see that distorted shadowy doll face in there, so I kept blasting the bag against the telephone pole. I only stopped when it suddenly felt lighter. I looked in the bag and there was no longer a creepy face peering back at me. I felt a strange sense of satisfaction, so I lit a smoke, and as soon as I took a puff, I heard something crying, or sobbing in the distance, deeper into the park. That was enough for me. I got the hell out of there. I got out of there, and I left my destroyed bag there. I am sorry. I'm usually really against littering, but I was freaking out, and it kind of happened. I headed back to the convenience store, and the guy was still in there, talking to the clerk. I told him about what had happened, and complained that there wasn't a doll there. He listened to my story, and ended up insisting on replacing my chocolate and canned coffees. That was really nice, I guess. Anyways, I just wanted to own a doll that moved by itself, so it's kind of an anticlimactic ending here. I really wanted that doll. Maybe next time. That's fucking dumb. That's such a...